Hello, my name is Min, and this is Min's English class. We study poems in middle and high schools, and hardly ever do we look back at them. We have lived our lives sharing mostly small talks and gossips with our friends and families, trying to avoid deep and meaningful conversations that contain important topics about life. As such, our life has become simple mundane, gray, and shallow. As teenagers, we thought about the purpose of our life. We wondered why we had to go to school, why we had to study at all. And all these questions made us ache inside, and therefrom we matured into the adults that we are today. The choices that we make and the passes that we take today or tomorrow are all results of our childhood suffering and mental and emotional agonies. That's why it is important that we read poems, as they always give us something to ponder. Today, I bring you a poem, and I hope this will give you another chance to think about your life and the choices you have made thus far. The poem is The Road Not Taken, and it's written by Robert Frost. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both, and be one traveler long I stood, and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth, then took the other as just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though, as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning, equally lay, in leaves no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and i i took the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference such a beautiful poem about choices that we make actually this poem is known as the most misread poem in the world and now we will spend some time together to talk about the background of the poem and the meanings of its line. Please remember though, all poems' interpretations are subject to each reader's unique understanding and impression. So feel free to use my interpretation and analysis to feed your own imagination and comprehension of the poem. So, here we go. Robert Frost wrote The Road Not Taken as a joke for a friend, the poet Edward Thomas. His friend Thomas was often very indecisive about which road they had to take when they were walking together and often said that they should in fact have taken the other one soon after writing the poem in 1915. Frost told Thomas that he had read the poem to an audience of college students and that they were all misled and confused by the meaning of the poem despite his effort to make it sound like a light joke. To his surprise, they all took the poem very seriously, which was not his intention at all. As his joke unfolds, Frost creates multi-layers of meanings, never quite allowing one meaning to replace the other. And this is quite ironic, because the road not taken describes how choice is inevitable. The road not taken begins with a dilemma. Walking in the forest, the speaker comes to a fork in the road and has to decide which path to follow. Here. Let's look at a yellow wood. In his description of the trees, Frost only uses the color yellow. 
A forest has many types of trees in it, cedar, and maple, birch trees. However, Frost's description of the yellow trees suggests that the main character of the poem is viewing only one feature of the forest, and it emphasizes one of the poem's main ideas. A single decision can transform a life. Also, the color yellow indicates that it is fall, and the season of autumn evokes a sense of transience. It will soon pass and become winter. On the next line, the speaker shows his feeling of frustration as he imagines traveling both paths simultaneously. The syntax of the first stanza also represents this desire for simultaneity. One, two, and three of the lines begin with the conjunction end. After looking over one road as far as it can, the speaker chooses to take the other road which he describes as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. Here, the word fair means good and decent, and he talks about it having a better reward. Later, he explains that the roads are comparably in the same condition. This time, the speaker observes that the roads are equally untraveled because there were carpets of newly fallen yellow leaves on both roads. There were no signs of any previous travels. Making choices is often irrational, and there is no rational explanation on making a certain choice when the options are equally desirable. And Frost tries to turn this rational behavior into an act of impulse which is a more pleasant and intentional decision. Decisions are much more pleasant than whims, and th this change of mindset is what Frost wants us to do. Instead of feeling powerless and indecisive all the time like his friend Thomas. Having made his choice, the speaker declares, Oh, I kept the first for another day. The diction up until now has been matter of fact, focusing on straightforward description and avoiding figurative language. In this line, however, there is a change. As the speaker shifts from depiction to contemplation, the language becomes more dramatic and old-fashioned. Up until this line, the entire poem has been one sentence. And this long and meandering syntax reflects the speaker's thought process upon meeting a fork on the road. As the tone becomes increasingly dramatic, it also turns playful. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Sounds like a line that will be played in a comedy. Whichever road he chooses, the speaker will enjoy a walk through a yellow forest. The poem's tone also shifts dramatically on the next line. Yet, knowing how way leads on to way, I doubt it if I should ever come back. Already, the speaker doubts he'll ever return. This sudden change of mood shows the fickle and changeable mental state of the speaker in the middle of making decisions. Now, let's look at the last stanza. The speaker is telling the lines with a lot more decisive tone. The use of the word shell is first notable as it shows his will and intention. And then there is this word, sigh. This is an extremely clever use of a word of self-contradiction. The word sigh has two opposite meanings. And when Frost read this poem to his college students the first time, they all took this poem as a song of victory. Unlike his original intention, the final stanza 
has been read as a celebration of individual decision. Far from being an ode to the glories of individualism, however, the last lines of the poem rather bring us back to the confusion that we faced at the fork and ask the readers, what if? What if the speaker took the other road? What if I chose the other option? After all, this question is what annoyed his friend Thomas the most. And what's surprising is that the audience took it very differently. They assumed the word sigh is a sigh of relief and the phrase all the difference is a change for the better, which made them believe that the poem is about victory made over two choices. However, knowing the intention of the poet and the motive behind this poem, we can read into the mind of the poet and the character in the novel. The sigh in the last stanza is actually a sigh of regret and frustration. And indeed, the title of the poem hovers over it like a ghost, the road not taken. According to the title, this poem is about absence. It's about what the poem never mentions, the choice the speaker did not make, which still haunts him. Again, however, Frost refuses to allow the title to have a single meaning. The road not taken also evokes the road less traveled, the road most people did not take. We often tell ourselves to be content with our present. We console ourselves that whatever choices that we made in the past were for the better. The power to a peace of mind lies in our imagination to hope and dream for a better claim, not in the factual clues of the yellow forest. So the poet is telling us that there is no right or wrong choice, and it all depends on how we, as travelers of roads, view it. All our choices are to our minds recollections to smile about or regrets to cry over. Just to add one more, the lines present fluctuating rhyme schemes which mirror the speaker and the reader's fluctuating mental status. So the poem, The Road Not Taken, is about the simultaneity of choices of varying climes. Thank you all for listening to my English lecture on today's poem, The Road Not Taken. If you liked my video, please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. If you have a poem or literature piece that you want me to make a video about, please leave comments below. Goodbye.